So that's on VST, uh, VST, that stock is buzzing. But the other one which we are focusing on is Thyroke. We have with us Rahul Guha, who's the MD and CEO of Thyroke, who's joining in to discuss the outlook for 2024. Remember that stock has seen a huge run up from its 52 week low, almost over 55% in terms of gains plus. Um, it rallied all the way from levels of around 416, 417 odd levels, which was its 52 week low to around 663 odd rupees. Rahul, hi, thank you um, very much for joining in. Um, you know, if we could just start by talking about your parent company, API Holdings, FarmEasy, getting that gush of cash because of its right, rights issue, which has been successful, worth around 3,500 odd crores. That would eventually mean that they'd you know, uh, repay their loan, which they had taken from Golden, Goldman Sachs, and uh, the pledge for Thyrocare Thyro would uh, reduce. What is the timeline for that? Because currently the pledge is 100%. What would it reduce to? And what is a sustainable level if you could guide investors? Uh, actually, can't give any guidance on that topic. Uh, as you know, I'm the managing director of Thyrocare. Uh, what happens at the promoter level, you know, it's difficult to comment at this point in time. Uh, what are the, the plans overall? So I think, you know, as I said, at this point in time, it's kind of difficult to, you know, give you a concrete timeline or even a commitment on on any of these aspects. Uh, that being said, uh, the Thyrocare business, which I can comment on, is doing very well. Uh, you've seen the results. You know, our franchise business continues to grow at 20%. Our partnerships business, excluding API, has been growing at 22%. And I think a lot of that good performance has been reflected in the rally. And I'm hopeful, you know, we'll be able to sustain the momentum as we go into the end of the year and enter into the next year. But unfortunately, on the on the capital structuring at this point, I, I it's difficult for me to comment. Would you require some money from the parent, if at all, to fund growth? Given the parent now has money, would I mean? I'm sure if they infuse money into your company, they would obviously do that in discussion with you, right? Anything of that sort has happened? See, as Thyrocare, actually, you know, we are a very net positive cash flow generating company. In fact, our investments have been all funded through internal accrual. We have very little debt on the balance sheet. That's mostly for equipment financing. Uh, but other than that, you know, we are a very, very positive operating cash flow company. We have never had any needs of any cash infusion mm. uh, from the parent at this point in time. Okay. API Holdings, that partnership revenue that you were talking about, it was down year on year in Q2, but it's recovered sequentially uh, from Q1 to Q2. I think it was up around 5 odd percent. What are the trends for this quarter and what are the trends that you expect in the coming quarters? Yeah, as I, I've said in the past, I feel on the online diagnostic space, the price pressures have eased off. You know, every mm -hmm. online player has actually come to much more rational pricing uh, when it comes to diagnostics online. And that, you know, along with a clear uh, path to profitability in the API business, I think we all feel that, you know, now is the time to actually grow the diagnostics business online in a profitable manner. So I think we should see a continuing momentum you know, in the right direction from the API group as well, because the diagnostics business is largely profitable. Uh, the online diagnostics business on API group is also largely profitable. So I can see more investments going to effectively fuel the growth of that business. How has third quarter been so far for you? And I ask this because, you know, the festive season shifted in this quarter. Typically, uh, you know, diagnostics companies are not very happy with festive season because people tend to postpone their tests, etc. during these periods. Uh, how have volume growths panned out uh, so far? I remember the last time you joined us, you did say that despite price hikes of 10%, there was no pullback on volume. So in the third quarter, one, have you increased prices? Secondly, what's the impact on volume so far? Uh, difficult to, you know, share specific guidance. Uh, what I will say at an industry level overall, you know, the third quarter is always very challenging. Nobody likes to do a diagnostic test during the Sahara, Diwali, Christmas and the New Year. So it's always a tough quarter uh, for the industry. And I think this quarter is no different from any of the previous quarters in terms of the uh, kind of degrowth that you would see between quarter two and quarter three. Uh, for the industry as a whole. So, uh, but as we move into quarter four, 
you know that's when the momentum really picks up a lot of people go into annual health checkups you know their corporate health checkups all of that so quarter 4 normally covers up everything in quarter 3 but mm-hmm. to your original question volume growth has not been great in quarter 3 uh, there will definitely be a decline between quarter 2 and quarter 3 which is kind of in line of what we have seen you know almost every year during the festive season no and year on year year on year i think the industry continues to grow at the you know the normal levels that uh, are there this year though i will say the festivities have been particularly long drawn out uh, you know we have seen uh, you know not only during uh, the sera but continuing into diwali and into the new year uh, people have celebrated a lot more this quarter so i would expect you know at an industry level not as much of the exuberance we saw in q2 Uh, but not you know terribly disastrous either okay your specific segments of testing janch which is your investigative or sickness brand of testing her check which is specifically for women's health arogyam which is you know been the longest and preventive health testing how are these specific segments doing um, see on a q on q basis what kind of traction are you seeing sure arogyam continues to be our flagship brand you know accounts for almost 35 40% of our uh, you know uh, checkup business and uh, janch is a small brand launched only i think in june of this year uh, that's already clocking as i said before a crore a month so i expect it to you know end the year maybe at about 15 crores or so uh, but it's uh, you know the momentum in that business has gone gone very well particularly during the fever season uh you know which was during august september and october as we entered into the festive season of course jans is not the the primary you know growth driver there but again as we move into jan feb march and we enter into the checkups i'm hopeful to see uh, further traction on jans her check uh, is actually a very doctor specific uh, package it's largely promoted to doctors specifically gynecologists you know to help women manage their health better that to scale up will take time because we need to build the field force behind that and you know ensure that we are reaching out to doctors and communicating the value proposition for hercheck so i wouldn't say you know hercheck is going to be a big brand this year uh, i am hopeful next year we'll see the traction in hercheck but i'm very happy with the pace of growth in arogyam and the mm. pace of adoption in charge all right and let's let's talk about the business on the whole then before we let you go rahul first half of this year your revenues have grown by about 8% third quarter is challenging you say the fourth quarter will more than make up for that so on an annual basis what's the kind of revenue run rate we can expect and on margins as well you know i remember them being almost as high as 30% at one point in time of course that wasn't sustainable but last couple of quarters they've stabilized at around that 25% mark do we see them hold around these levels or do we see some scope of improvement here margins and revenues for the second half of this year as i said on the revenue side i i think the first half momentum you know i'm hopeful we'll be able to accelerate in the second half i'll be very happy if we end the year with uh, double digit growth the reason being that we exited as you know the you know very low margin government business and the uh, online business has not been growing at the pace that we thought it would so with our franchise business and our partnerships business growing at 20% and a significant degrowth in our uh, api business as well as our government business year on year i'll be very happy if we end the year at a double digit growth margins as i said have been sustaining normalized which is you know net of the esops have always been at the you know 30% level and i expect that to continue through the year Okay all right uh, Rahul we're going to let you go on that note thanks very much uh, for joining in and speaking with us so that is Thairo Care talking about the business that yes Q3 is generally sluggish is going to be sluggish simply because of the festive season but they seem to be quite bullish in terms of their specific segments which they have such as Janch uh, as well as Arogyam which are in the preventive health testing segments we'll take a short break we'll get you more on the markets lot of stocks lined up stay tuned